All right, everybody, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about parallel line and angle pairs. Uh, you should have gotten a note sheet in class that will help you out with this. Don't worry about the left column on it. Um, that's actually already given to you. But you should worry about filling in what it says and a drawing or example for each of these. Um, don't worry about the ones that say converse. We'll be coming back to those later. So with that said, let's start. The first two definitions on your sheet are ones that should be familiar. The idea of perpendicular lines and the idea of parallel lines. Um, as your note sheet says, perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect to form a right angle. There you can see the right angle being labeled. That helps them to identify as perpendicular. And parallel lines are two lines that do not intersect and are in the same plane. In this case, right now, we're treating the plane as this whiteboard surface. And you can see those two lines have the same slope. So they're never going to intersect. And uh, they are parallel because of that. One word that's a little bit new is this idea of skew lines. Um, if you imagine that cube that's drawn on the paper as 3D, you can see that line AB is sort of going up and down on the side of the cube. And CD is going left and right in, on the front of the cube. Those two lines are not parallel because they don't have the same slope, but they also will never intersect because they're on different parts of the cube. This is what we call skew lines. So that may be a new word, but that's what they look like. They're, they're not parallel, but they also will never intersect. So those are the first three definitions on this page. For the next ones, we're going to be dealing with this drawing. And what we have here is two parallel lines. And a line that's cutting through those parallel lines. Called a transversal. These aren't definitions on your page, but it'll, it's what they're called. And the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 are all representing angles that form between the parallel lines and the transversal. So this is going to be our setup for the next definitions. For our first one, we have the vertical angles theorem. And the vertical angles theorem basically says that if angles are vertical angles, remember that a vertical angle means that you have two angles that are formed from two pairs of opposite rays. So if we take angle 5, angle 7 is a vertical angle to it. If we take angle 6, angle 8 is a vertical angle to it. And we could do the same thing for the ones above, but we don't need to. But if angles are vertical angles, then their measures are congruent to each other. So vertical angles are always congruent. And that's what you would want to write on your what it says. If you're drawing, you may want to just draw this picture and label things accordingly. Uh, you can use different colors like I did if you want to. So that's vertical angles theorem. Linear pair theorem says that if two angles form a linear pair, then their measures are supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. Supplementary. Uh, so as one example, if we take angle 1, and we combine it with angle 2, angle 1, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180 degrees. We want to use a different pair. We could say the measure of angle 7 plus the measure of angle 8 also equals 180 degrees. And you may remember from our, one of our definitions earlier that both of those are examples of linear pairs. Two angles that are adjacent to each other, next to each other, that add up to 180 degrees, that form a straight angle. So that is a linear pair theorem. Corresponding angles theorem. So corresponding angles, if you look at this picture, you'll notice that 1, 2, 3, and 4 match up with angles 5, 6, 7, and 8, respectively. So if I choose angle 4, 
the one that it matches up with in the other set of four angles is angle A. If I choose angle 2, the one that that matches up with is angle 4. These pairs of angles are congruent. So angle 2 is congruent to angle 6. And angle 4 is congruent to angle 8. And these are called corresponding angles because they're in the same place. That definition is already given to you. So if lines are parallel, then the pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. It always works out that way. Alternate interior angle theorem. This is on the back side of the note sheet. Alternate interior angles, as it says, are two angles that are formed by two lines at a transversal and lie between the two lines on opposite sides of the transversal. What this looks like on this picture then, for example, angle 5 and angle 3 are alternate interior angles. Interior meaning between the two parallel lines, and alternate meaning that they're on different sides of this pink transversal. So 5 and 3 are one pair of them, and another pair what the alternate interior angle theorem says is if lines are parallel, like these two green ones are, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So that means that angle 4 is congruent to angle 6. And also, angle 3 is congruent to angle 5. Next one, we have alternate exterior angles theorem. Similar idea, they're still going to cross over the transversal, but this time we're looking outside of the two parallel lines. So, for example, angle 1 and 7, those are alternate exterior angles. And angle 8 angle 2 are alternate exterior angles. And just like before, if lines are parallel, then alternate exterior angles are congruent, just like the alternate interior. So that means that angle 2 would be congruent to angle 8. Also, angle 1 would be congruent to angle 7. We have one more type of angle to go over this time, and it's this. Same side interior angles theorem. So that's referring to things that, so same side means that they're not crossing over the transversal, and interior again means between the two parallel lines. So if we look at four and five, those are same side interior angles. And if we look at three and six, those are same side interior angles as well. And you'll notice that I didn't use the arcs. And that's because those are not always congruent. But the special rule with these angles is if we take the measure of angle 3 in this picture and we add it to the measure of angle 6, they're going to total up to be 180 degrees. Which means, for your definition, if lines are parallel, like these green lines are, then same side interior angles are supplementary. These add up to 180 degrees. The other one that we have in this picture is that the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5 will also be 180 degrees. So, that should be filling out most of your sheet, everything except for the converses. Um, no practice problems for this one, but I'll know if you watch the video because you should have the note sheet filled out. So, uh, when we get to class, we will talk about this, we'll expand on it a little bit, and uh, hopefully you found this video informative, hopefully you learned some stuff. So I will see you in class. See you later.